Good morning, Facebook Live and Jocelyn fans. I am Rebecca, the program director here at the Jocelyn Center, and this is episode 57 of the Jocelyn Variety Show. So Veronica is here to do our morning warm up, and then we have Susan to talk about brain health, um, and I think we're focusing on sleep this week and how sleep affects your brain. So let's do our body warm up and get that going, and then we'll do our brain workout, and it'll be a great start to your day. Thank you, Rebecca. And hello, everyone. I'm going to stick around for the, the uh, talk on sleep. That's so, so important. Well, let's see. Okay, today is June 10th. We're going to do, after we march a little bit, we're going to do 10 of each move. Okay? Just a little heads up. So let's get ourselves moving. If you're seated, just keep on marching. And again, take some inventory. How's your breathing? How's your posture? Try really hard just to focus on exactly what you're doing. You're marching in place, checking your posture. Take some nice deep breaths. You can hold your arms up if you want where you're breathing in. And then exhale. There is nothing like the breath to calm and center yourself. Always remember that. It doesn't matter where you are. Good. All right. Marching a little bit longer. Okay. So if you are seated, just do your best to, to tap back. And if you're standing, standing, then you can just stand behind your chair or to the side. Okay, and if you don't need to touch your chair, then just take off and we're gonna start counting. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there really is just the equivalent of five on each side. So we're gonna come back and do the whole thing twice. Okay, now knees up. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna slow down just a little bit. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Side leg lifts. I need to move behind the chair just a little bit. One, two, three, four. You're just lifting high enough where your body says to stop uh, and keeping your upper body straight. Okay, now we're going to lunge to the side and only lunge uh, just a little bit. Don't go down too low. So you're going to step out and sit back, that's one, and up. Straight leg out and sit back, that's two, okay? Your hands can be wherever you need them to be. Keep them up, and put them on your hips. Step out, sit back, and lunge. It's about seven, eight, nine and ten okay arms out circle forward count to ten three four five six seven eight nine ten and back one two check your shoulders make sure that you're not uh, your shoulders are down relaxed behind you straight arms out and just reach up one two keep your shoulders down three see how how much you can reach with those straight arms reach up keep your shoulders down let's do three more seven eight nine ten I'm going to turn to the side we're going to row one two keep your shoulders down squeeze your shoulder blades together four five six seven, eight, and I've got a little bend in my knees. Remember, always a little bend in your knees. Good. Okay, let's start again. So we're going to kick back. One, two, three. And you're really lifting those legs, lifting. You're not swinging, just lifting up, lifting up. One more each side, one more each side. Let's, let's make that nine. Here's ten. And now your knees up. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Side leg lifts, ready? Just high enough where you can feel your, like your waist is saying, okay, stop. Upper body stays straight. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Now we're going to lunge to the side. Remember, straight leg out and sit back into your lunge and up. Here's two and three. And why are we sitting back? Because when you lunge, you put your weight behind your knees, okay? So you send that work back in your legs, in your glutes. Let's make that eight. And we'll make this nine and 10. I think we're a short one. Go one more. There. Okay, now arms circle forward. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And backward. A little bend in your knees. So you got a good strong foundation as you were working your upper body. Eight, nine, ten. Keep your arms out. Shoulders are down and reach up. And two. Three, four, five. Keep an eye, keep an eye on your breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Keep your breathing going. Uh, let's say eight, nine, ten, and we'll do some rowing. You've got a little bend in your knees, and really pull back and squeeze those shoulder blades together. Three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, just a couple stretches and we'll start learning more about how important sleep is in our life. Nice big rotation, nice big rotation with your shoulders. Really feel that. Okay, and one stretch we're going to do. Make sure that you're breathing. Squeeze your abdominals as you bend over whether you're on your chair or you're in countertop, just somewhere where you can uh, have a little place to rest your hands, straight leg back. Remember, you're going to just have your straight legs that are, have a little bit of a bend. Straight back. So this stretch is going all the way up the back of your leg. Super important. All the way up into your lower back. Okay. Might even be a very good stretch to do before you get into bed. Hold it while you're breathing. And come on up. Okay. Great. great. Thank you, Veronica. Have a great day. That was awesome. All right, guys. So next we have Susan. So give me just a second while I get her situated. And we're going to talk about some brain health. Good. How you do? Yeah, that's fair. How's that? All right. Well, Is that good? All the way up. Because I want you to get all this important information. Hello, everyone. Is that good? Do you want me to stand a little closer? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just going to get situated. Okay. Oh, that's how they're doing on this. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get this right one of these days. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch this camera over. Okay, thanks. And then, all is good. So, I am Susan Chinsky. I work at the Jocelyn Wellness Center. I do one on one counseling, problem solving. What'd you need? <laughs> do you want a pointer? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had that option. <laughs> so. So I do problem solving. I teach um, aging mastery sometimes, brain boot camp, grief recovery class, and Imago dialogue, which is between two couples. It's a type of therapy. So, but one of my favorite classes is brain boot camp. And we talked about exercise. We talked about using your brain. We played a little brain games. And I thought, you know what? One of the things that we're missing is sleep. So sleep is really important. So I thought we'd talk about it, why it's important, 
Um, are we making it a priority? Because it should be. Just like exercise is a priority, and eating is a priority, and using brain games is a priority, sleep should be a priority. And so are you getting enough sleep? Are you not sleeping enough? Do you just go to bed whenever? So we're going to talk about some of the things you can do, why you may not be sleeping well, what the importance of sleep is, and why you need it. So sleep and brain health go together. So 75% of the people with depression have problems sleeping. And half of the people with anxiety have problems sleeping. So that's a big number. So we want to change that. So sleep deprivation. We know it causes fatigue. You don't get a good night's sleep. We drag around the next morning, and you just can't function very well. So you're tired, which impairs your concentration. So you get in the car, you try to drive, and you're tired. You're impairing your concentration. And accidents can happen more easily. You can actually trip and fall more easily. So it's really important you get that sleep. Learning. Can you learn and remember things? You know, if you can't concentrate and you're tired, how much can you really learn? So that's really important. And memory, and we, that is ultra important because we talk about all the time, Alzheimer's, dementia, you need it for your memory. So you need good sleep to get a good memory. Also, mood. So how does it affect your mood? If you don't sleep, are you more cranky? Are you depressed? Are you just moping around all day in a fog? So it's really important. So how do we get that sleep? So there's also higher rates of diseases, such as insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome and diabetes. So what happens is you need to sleep and so your hormones are balanced. You have a ghrelin and lipid. And what happens is if you don't get enough sleep, those get out of balance. So you may wake up and be hungry and be hungry all day. So that leads to weight gain and not good. So um, also cardiovascular events such as heart attacks. So you're not getting that rest in your heart. So you're not getting the, the rest. It's not good. Also addiction. Now you might not think of addiction as being an issue with sleep, but it is because you, you just need that sleep, you need to feel better, and when you don't feel better, you may reach for a pill, you may reach for some drugs, go, okay, this will make me feel better, this will wake me up, this will put me to sleep. So it's kind of, addiction falls in there also. And short life expectancy. So if I told you that you needed like a half hour a night of sleep, you would gain a year, you might think, oh yeah, that's a good idea, it's a good trade-off. So I'm not sure what the life expectancy is, but I just know it's lower if you're not getting that restful sleep. Also, lower immune function. So we all want healthy immune systems and we all want to be healthy. And if we're not sleeping, we're not getting that rest. So we need that. And also cancer, believe it or not. So are those good reasons to sleep? I hope so. So Dr. Amen talks about this in the risk factors of biological, psychological, social, and spiritual. So biological is your body, such as sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, medications, poor sleep hygiene, hormonal imbalances, or pain. So those might be biological reasons of why you can't sleep. Psychological reasons might be depression, anxiety, uh, worry about finances, or just worry in general, relationship problems, worrying about your health or health of another, especially in this time, what's going on in society. You might be a little more worried about that. So and that's taking a psychological toll on you, which might ca be causing you not to get a good night's sleep. So social might be staying out too late. We're really not staying out too late these days. We're staying up too late watching Netflix and Prime and all those good movies and TV shows. I'm a little guilty of that sometimes. Um, traveling, we haven't been doing much traveling, but when you travel across time zones, you might get jet lag and you might have problems sleeping in the new the new place that you're staying at. And also spiritual, if you don't know why you're doing something, you may not want to do it and realize how important it is to do it. So let's talk a little bit about sleep apnea. 
So we also talk about sleep in uh, Aging Mastery. And Aging Mastery is a five-week course, and it's usually twice a week on Tuesday and Thursdays. And we have guest speakers. And one of the topics is sleep. So we have guest speakers that talk about nutrition and exercise and falling and um, that's been a while, but it's those type of topics. But one is sleep, and we usually get a sleep doctor in who goes through more of the medical reasons for sleep. But it's really interesting how many people have gone in that class and told me they have sleep apnea. So I just thought it was really important to add here because maybe you have it. So what is sleep apnea? It is when you snore loudly, you stop breathing multiple times a night, and then feel excessively tired during the day. So it's, you all of a sudden, you're kind of like holding your breath, it sounds like, but you're not taking a breath, and then sometimes you even gasp for a breath. So your partner, if someone's with you, may go, oh my gosh, what's going on? Well, what's going on is you're not getting that air into your lungs, which is really important for you. And it triples your risk of, of uh, depression and dementia, and it makes it harder to lose weight. So that's really important to get diagnosed. And your brain doesn't get the oxygen it needs. So your brain cells may be dying. And that's what's so worrisome, is you're not getting the oxygen to your brain. You're not getting it to your whole body. So actually, your heart gets affected, your limbs, everything gets affected by not getting oxygen in there. So it's really important. And on a spec scan, it often looks like early Alzheimer's with your brain, if you've had sleep apnea and it's untreated. So the, the um, treatment right now, the best one is the CPAP, and they have changed the design of the CPAP. It used to be a whole big face mask and hard to breathe, and, but it's gotten smaller and there's different shapes and different sizes, so there's different types of CPAPs now. So if you think you have sleep apnea, definitely check with your doctor, see if you need, they do a sleep test. You can either do it, I think, at home, or they want you to come into their lab and sleep there, and they'll check your um, breathing. So really important. Now during sleep, so what happens during sleep? Well the brain consolidates memories which improves recall abilities for the following day. So your memories get stored in there. So you have memories during the day, things are going on, and then when you sleep it stores it. It puts it back in your longer term memory. So that's really important. Also, um, it cleans out the weekly the toxins in your brain. So your bo your brain it takes 20% of your energy. So a lot's going on in your brain, even though it's such a small part of your body. It's taking all, a lot of energy, sugar, and so it needs to be cleaned uh, nightly. And it's um, the lymphatic system is what it is that cleans it. So that's important to do. So restful sleep. Well, avoid daytime naps. So if you're napping too much during the day, you might not be able to fall asleep at night. Um, also, limit evening liquids. Because what happens is, of course, we all know what happens, right? You drink too much before you go to bed, you'll be up all night. So you won't get a restful sleep that way. And create a restful environment. Create something really soft and soothing. Don't have a lot of stuff going on in your room. Kind of make it quiet. And make it so you enjoy it, you like your room. Also, take it easy in the evening. Don't go, you know, doing something crazy things and going, having a lot of fun. You can do that every once in a while, but try to calm down before you go to sleep. You know, watch TV, read a book, just relax a little bit and use relaxation methods. So you could do some type of meditation or you could do um, where you just relax your body part by part and then train your, train your brain to sleep. Train it to sleep. It needs to go to sleep at a certain time. So what is good sleep hygiene? Because you may have heard that term and thought, Look, what is that? So it's actually a lot of stuff. So what we want to do is first have a cool, dark room. So we want it cool. They say about 68 degrees. That's kind of cool, I think, and costly if you live in the desert full time. Um, Dark, you want maybe dark out, blackout shades. You want it dark. You don't want a lot of light in your room. You don't want a lot of night lights. You don't want a lot of you know um, things from your TV or your, ra your clock radio. You want it on the darker side, and you want quiet. So you don't want a lot of noise. Hopefully you don't have some street noise. If you do, you may want to just play some background quiet noise. Um, and address emotional problems so you don't go to bed angry. So you're not upset with your spouse or your friend, and you're going, Oh God, I'm like so upset because how many times have we not gotten a good night's sleep being angry at people? 
And sleep schedule. Are you going to bed the same time every night, waking up the same time every morning? That's really important because now we're kind of doing whatever and we think, oh, we'll just sleep in, we'll go to bed late, we'll do this. But try to get yourself on some, some type of sleep schedule. It's actually good to be on some type of schedule during this period, especially when you're not going out so much. But a sleep schedule is really helpful. And put your electronics away at night. You know, don't be on your phone the last thing you do at night. Don't be on your iPad. Um, so, which brings me to the next one is reduce blue light. Read a book, not an e-reader or a tablet. Because what happens is it has blue light in it, and that blue light stops your melatonin from being produced. And melatonin is a sleep hormone. So you want to have a lot of melatonin and help you fall asleep. Otherwise, you're not going to fall asleep. So make sure your hands and feet are warm. Nowadays they're probably pretty warm, but sometimes in the winter you may get cold and you can't really, it's hard to fall asleep with cold hands and feet. So you may want to wear socks or gloves or just, you know, get under a warm blanket. Use your bedroom for sleep or sexual activity. So there was some per, uh, one person that came to the sleep clinic and she was having problems sleeping and she the, the doctor realized why she was having problems sleeping was she was doing everything in her room. It was hot, it was the summer here, she didn't want to pay for air conditioning for her whole house, so she figured she'll just stick in her bedroom. So she would read her mail in her bedroom, she would do her computer work on her bedroom, she would read, she would do, you know, whatever she could do, it was all in her bedroom. And the, the doctor said, look, you have to only sleep in your bedroom or sexual activity, that's it. You can't do other things in your bedroom. So keep that in mind. If you're having problems sleeping, think about what else are you doing in your bedroom? Maybe don't watch TV in your bedroom, even if there's a TV in there, watch in the other room. So figure out, could that be one of your problems? And refrain from checking the clock when you wake up in the middle of the night. I know it's so easy, you just want, what time is it, what time is it, what time is it? Try not to look at the clock, it may help. And then you can use lavender or other essential oils. Sometimes you could put it on your body, spray your pillow, spray it around, have a diffuser in your room. Sometimes those oils just relax you. And they're non-addictive, they're, they're just easy to use, and you can use them when you feel like you need it. Um, sound therapy might be another good one that you could do. And sound therapy would be like a sound machine or some type of meditation music in the background or something. And you can use it to fall asleep, to stay asleep, whatever, but that might work for you. And wind down prior to sleep. So that would be read a book, just relax, take a hot, warm bath. That helps, especially with Epsom salt. That all relaxes your body, that calms it. So um, you just wind down somehow. See, you may have a certain routine you do. You may do some stretches before you go to bed and then your body knows, oh yeah, we're getting ready for bed. So especially if you have some type of routine to wind down would be good too. And exercise early in the day and avoid exercises a few hours before bed. So you want to get that exercise in your body, get moving in the morning or earlier in the day and then of course relax it at night. And avoid heavy ev evening meals. You don't want to like eat a meal and go to bed and then you have stomach problems or GERD or lots of issues with digestion. So if you can do that, eat it earlier. And keep hydrated. Not close to bedtime, but keep hydrated. Drink a lot. Especially the weather now, it's warming up. You definitely want to keep hydrated, whether that's with water or some type of vitamin drinks or some type of electrolytes in your water, whatever it is, you want to keep hydrated. And avoid stimulants such as coffee until the early afternoon or, or morning. You want to drink your coffee early, but not late in the day. And getting restful sleep. So these are some of the products you can use. There's lots of things you could do. You could actually drink some nice calming tea and you may have a Sleepy Time tea is one of the brands that makes a good tea or just a chamomile tea or something. These are um, more supplements that you could take. So one of them is melatonin. So melatonin is a hormone that helps regulate sleep cycle. So you may have heard if you go travel, you may take some melatonin to help you adjust to the, the time difference. But you can also take melatonin every night to go to sleep. And you can take, I think it's like 0.3 milligrams to six milligrams. You can even take a lot more. And it's just, it's just good for you. It's not like it's bad for you. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good thing for you to take. So um, it's not like a medication. 
And 5-HTP that boosts the production of neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin makes you happy. So it also but calms your body at night if you take it at night to sleep. So that's another one. And magnesium glycinate or citrus is a mineral that plays a vital role in 300 biochemical processes of the body. M magnesium is a great mineral and it plays so many, it does so many things to your body and it relaxes you at night. So some people take magnesium during the day. If you can, take it at night, maybe an hour or two before you go to bed, maybe at dinner, it'll relax you. And magnesium's another good one. So many people are deficient in magnesium that it's really important. You can ask your doctor to check your magnesium and, and see what it is, but most likely you're low in it. So taking a few tablets is okay. Or like um, there's actually a mineral thing called Calm that you can check into that. Um, also GABA, it's an amino acid that has a calming effect. And GABA quiets your mind more than um, the other ones. So they all kind of play different parts, but there's lots of stuff if you go into the health food store and saw what you could do, it would be really um, beneficial if you need help in sleeping. And it's okay if you need it. You know, these little hacks are good for you. I like lavender, I like the essential oils because those you can just put them on or spray them. They just are nice in the bedroom. And so um, these are all little things you can do to get sleep. So I do want to say we're starting a brain boot camp in June 17th to the 24th and it'll be two hours each and it'll be on Zoom. You'll get paperwork before when you sign up and um, I hope you guys can join us on that. If not in person, hopefully we'll get some classes open soon in person. So once again, I'm Susan Chinsky and I work at the Jocelyn Wellness Center and hopefully everyone will get a good night's sleep, if not now, soon. Have a good one, guys. See you next week. Bye, Bye. Susan. All right. So that means that we are ready to go on with our day. So thank you so much for joining us for the Jocelyn Variety Show today. Um, I hope that you come back tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday, which means we will be doing our take 20 minute exercise with Veronica. She does an excellent job. Um, and don't forget that you can replay these later. So if you enjoy Veronica's 20 minute exercises and you want to do them every day, you can find these on YouTube or on our uh playlist on, <laughs> on Facebook. Uh, you can also go back and watch Susan's older videos. I think we've talked about, um, we talked about depression, we talked about nutrition, we talked about different uh, games that you can play to keep your mind uh, active and your brain moving. So don't forget, you can watch all of these anytime and we will see you guys tomorrow. Y'all have a great day.